This presentation illustrates irregularities in blood samples from six autistic children. Our review consists of six different cases varying in age and sex. Generally speaking, each case exhibited significant if not severe pathological factors which support the assertion that agglutination and ionic toxicity are significant mechanisms in the process of autism. In each case, the ratio of healthy red blood cells was between 1 and 2 percent, with the exception of sample number 6, which is a child which is substantially recovered, approximately 70 percent, which had an approximate healthy red blood cell ratio of about 15 percent. The slides that follow provide visual evidence that red blood cell health is a significant factor in autism and important, more importantly a significant inhibiting factor to the child's ability to heal. The zeta potential is the property of particles in a fluid to remain dispersed or separated. This image illustrates a sample which has uh, reasonably good zeta potential. Most of the erythrocytes are separated and have a good charge distribution or halo around them indicating that there is sufficient electrical repulsion to maintain separation. Similarly, this image shows blood that is stuck together like rolls of coins. This formation is called Rilo and indicates clearly that the bloods lack the electrostatic or the bloods in the serum lack the electrostatic potential to repel each other. Blood traveling or circulating in this formation obviously lacks the ability to traverse capillaries which are approximately the same width or diameter in a as a red blood cell. We can see here in this image that red blood cells barely travel, barely fit in the capillaries. Blood that travels in clumps, as pictured, provides an ongoing stress on the healing systems of the body. Principal healing systems like bone marrow and liver all depend on blood flow, and when that blood flow is shut off, healing becomes limited. When these clumps travel through arteries and traverse the continuously narrowing dimensions of the capillary beds, they eventually form clogs. These clogs shut down oxygen and nutrient supplies to the tissues that the capillaries serve, resulting in cellular damage and death as a result of suffocation and nutrient deprivation. In simple terms, maintaining blood flow by maintaining serum or blood zeta potential provides an essential supply or maintains the essential supply of nutrients to cells. When this category of agglutination occurs, things get clogged up and the ratio of tissue death due to hypoxia and starvation goes up, often beyond the body's ability to recover. This sample illustrates the tendency for red blood cells to stick together like rolls of coins. It also shows the tendency for very high levels of intracellular debris. The entire slide shows that the artifact structure illustrated in the close-up slide is consistent across the entire sample. Sample 2 shows a virtually identical pattern showing each red blood cell stack like a roll of coins. Sample 3 is unique because it has a single healthy blood cell. However, every other cell is clumped together as we have seen in the previous two examples. A high level view of the slide shows that the pattern of Rouleau is consistent across the entire sample. Sample 4 presents an almost identical picture with a very high level of intracellular artifacts suggesting either yeast or bacteria. The high level view of the sample shows that the pattern is consistent throughout the slide. Sample 5 shows a different category of dysfunction. The majority of 
cells on this view present surface anomalies suggesting either collapsed cell membrane or parasitic inhabitation. Note the small percentage of erythrocytes which appear healthy. The drift survey view shows a very high percentage of damaged red blood cells and a very low percentage of healthy erythrocytes. The probability that this blood can deliver adequate oxygen to brain cells and body cells is very low. This sample shows a much higher percentage of healthy erythrocytes. However, notice the very high percentage of donut looking cells suggesting collapsed membrane. This blood, even though it's the most healthy of the sample set, is likely compromised in its ability to deliver oxygen to tissues. Observe that the high level view of the cells in sample 6 is consistent with the close up. The artifacts and tendency for agglutination are consistent across the sample, as well as the tendency for donut shaped cells that have collapsed membranes. All of the samples that we've processed are consistent. We seldom see healthy red blood cells and each sample suggests significant limitations in oxygen delivery. The tendency for highly agglutinated samples is approximately 80 percent. It's very likely that these individuals experience continuous ischemia resulting in ongoing cellular damage that further limits their ability to heal. The percentage of samples that show high levels of damaged cells is approximately 20 percent. Collectively, these phenomena are likely contributors to the durability of autism. The book Colloids in Biology and Medicine provides a quite comprehensive review of the subject of colloids in blood, saliva, urine, and biological systems. It's written as a service to physicians and individuals studying health who seek functional understanding of how and why colloids matter in biological systems. The book is 520 pages and as such is quite a serious reference.